Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. You are watching Landi Krishnan Devi Sandeep Das and in this session today we are going to learn about the basic AI and ML concept that is required for the MLOP series. Okay, and what are the things that you are going to cover today? We will learn about what is AI, what is ML, what is ML model, ML model training, foundation model, hugging face, LLM, generative AI, rack and Amazon bedrock. Okay, so all these concepts are very important. So watch till the end. Let's get started. So the first topic what exactly is an ai now anybody ask you about ai maybe during interview maybe a general question i want you to picture this okay okay let's let's go the definition first okay and then i will give you my own explanation now what is ai ai or artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence in machines to perform tasks like learning reasoning and problem solving and you can imagine like machines are dancing machines you know greeting you machines delivering your package or product from one address to another address machine doing the organization of your uh, things in any place or it's a robot doing your cleaning work robot cooking your food it can be anything machines can perform human like activities so if any machine or software can mimic a human intelligence i will call that ai or artificial intelligence okay now of course, it can be any of example I have shown you. Okay, now the thing is that how AI is doing all that. Answer is the ML part or machine learning, and of course we are doing the ML ops for the particular reasoning, right? So now let's learn about what exactly is ML. So ML is a subset of AI that enable systems to learn from the data and make prediction or decisions without any explicit programming and explicit programming in the sense it can be you can think like when you do programming if you're a programmer for program background you can program uh, software to do the if else condition switch statement or maybe other condition for loop right now without writing all those loops okay all, all those logics if machine can perform from own intelligence based on the past data we call that machines learning okay or ml now you should be wondering how does the machine learning works now in order to understand how the machine learning works you have to understand about the machine learning model first now what is exactly a machine learning model now a machine learning model is a mathematical representation that is trained on data using algorithm to recognize pattern make predictions or decision without the explicit programming just writing the if else and all this logical codes now how does this then ml model get generated ml model get generated after doing the ml training so what is ml training now machines uh, get trained based on the past data to generate some mathematical representation of format or pattern whatever you want to say okay kind of you can think of like a template or pattern it generate that is what is we call the ml model which is the final output after doing the ml training now how uh, what are the different kind of ml training is there for to do the ML training, there is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforced learning, semi-supervised learning, deep learning, online learning, transfer learning, and assembly learning. Now, there are many other different kinds of learning as well. And all this learning and training thing we are going to cover in a future video when I show how to do the ML training. Okay. But just for now, just understand ML model generate after doing the ML training. Okay. And then AI uses this ML models to do the prediction or do the, any kind of task. Okay. So that is about the ML model and training. Okay, now let's learn about the foundational models. Okay, so what are the foundational model? These are the models that is generated using massive scale of data. Okay, and it's a very diverse data set. This um, these foundational models is trained on, and it's a general purpose adaptable for wide range of tasks. For example, natural language processing, image generation, coding, and all this are used as a foundation so that you can train your custom data so you can train this model with your custom data for maybe uh, you're in healthcare so whatever healthcare data you have you have the foundation model you put inside the healthcare uh, data so that it's become a healthcare model related model for example you are have some missionaries so you have the foundation model you train this foundation model with some uh, that missionaries data it become that missionary data okay for example your devops engineer you have uh, this foundation model. You train this foundation model with your machine, uh, say uh, your DevOps related data, and it become a DevOps related model. So this is how this foundation model works. Okay, 
just remember the four points it it uh, you know pre trained is on massive data set it is a general purpose it has general purpose capabilities uh, it is fine tuned for custom use cases for example just the example i've given you and is scalable and you can use the api access to in as using say any cloud provider for example aws azure or google cloud okay now if you see uh, on top i have given good examples of this foundation model for example gpt4 cloudy from anthropy uh, llama from meta uh, compound r from kohe uh, stable diffusion from stability ai gemini from the google deep mind okay and of course there is a new boy in the gang that is called uh, deep seek r1 uh, which i will just talk right now so we talked about the foundation model but what are the most famous models okay you can say that most remember starting right now from the deep seek r1 which is a high performance chinese ai model optimized for reasoning and language tasks by the way you can use this deep seek r1 as a foundation model as well and you can train the custom data okay that's fine then there is sonnet a small but efficient llm designed for resource constrained environment when you have the less resources than metas llama and which is the family of open weight ai model optimized for research and deployment then you have open ai gpt instead of r generative ai model powering chat gpt and other application then there is um, google gemini a multi model ai model integration text image and reasoning capabilities but or in big it's called the bi directional encoder representations from transformers a pre trained nlp model by google designed for understanding context in language task widely used for search ranking qa and text classification then you have the mistral ai which is a state of art open weight model known for efficiency and performance then you have the cloudy from anthropic a conversational ai model focus on safety security and liability and finally you have the mausic uh, mpd which is a scalable lm optimized for low latency interface okay these are the famous ml models now right now the most famous is the deep seek r1 and the metas llama and open ai gpt these are the most like top 3 okay now we learn about this uh, famous ml models right now there's about the very important thing that is the hugging face now what is the hugging face hugging face is a website okay but it's, it's beyond a website so hugging face is the leading open source ai hub providing you pre trained ai model data sets developer tool for nlp computer vision and beyond it act as a collaborative ai platform where researchers and developers can share find in model even if you can uh, download this you know deep seek r1 model any other you know open source model from the uh, hugging page and you can run uh, different tasks on that you can train this model as your you know customize it you can do whatever you want from the hugging face it give you data it give you uh, you know uh, tools anything okay everything now just learn about the key features uh, it hosts thousands of open source ai model for example gpt llama deep seek mistral etc provide transformer library uh, which is the you know uh, a widely used framework for nlp models then allow you easy fine tuning and deployment of model via the interface api it support ai communities enabling research and collaboration and development hugging phase is central to ai ecosystem powering ai application across the research startup and enterprise deployment so if you are planning planning to use open source model and all that you should be using a hugging phase okay it's a site you can go you can explore the site okay now let's learn about the very famous talk of the town that is llm now what is llm you might be wondering right let me clear you that all the misunderstanding or all the doubts you have first of all it stand for large language models now what are this large language models or llm now it's an advanced deep learning model trained on vast amount of text data to understand generate and process human language okay and this model are based on uh, architecture like transformer for example gpt bard llama and there is the latest one that is deep uh, deep seek r1 as well now how does this llm work okay now this first point okay this llms or large language uh, machine learning models are trained on billions to trillions of word and diverse data set for example books websites article anything and anything that is available okay then tokenization so text a big text is broken into smaller units or for example words or subwords called token for processing 
okay and then self attention mechanism so llms weight the importance of different words into sentence to understand the context and finally contains billions of parameters for example gpt3 has 175 billion parameters it's huge okay that's why they call large language models now it sounds great but it has the limitations as well so what are the limitations hallucinations which is the very most common thing uh, like between all the ml models now which is uh, it might generate a pluishable sound like incorrect or fabricated content okay so you have to be aware of that bias sometimes this ml models reflect biases um, it may be because of the train data for example if you are the ask the you know, deep seek r1 about the india arunachal pradesh it will not give you any answer okay um so similar kind of this biases will be there okay maybe political bias it could be cultural bias maybe gender bias okay computational cost now especially the open ai gpt models and ml models huge computation power requires okay now this latest uh, deep seek r1 which doesn't require that much of the computing power so there are different models uh, different lms but most of the lms required very huge computational power which results a huge computational cost now ethics now there are of course uh, many um, negative use cases of this llm for example this deep fake for example is a very bad use case happening these days right like it can copy your face and it can do other things stuff which you might not like uh, my people think it might be you okay that's the ethics issue now the context window now since it has a limited memory of earlier text it uh, might be a problem in long conversation now with the latest implementation of for example gpt4 5 in deep mind deep seek also r1 it's much improved anyway okay so this is about the llm okay now that you have understood what is llm let's jump into generative ai now you have heard this generative ai word many 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 times now let me clarify you what is exactly a generative ai now what is generative ai generative ai refers to artificial intelligence model that can generate new content okay for example new text images code music video etc that might not exist in the past data based on of course based on the learned patterns from the large data set unlike traditional ai which mainly classifies or predict generative ai creates the new output for example uh, you know chat gpt can write uh, article or can generate new image uh, using for, uh, using their ml model for you right uh, like similarly github copilot can generate new code based on your past code pattern okay so these are the generative ai it can generate new content based on the past data so it's, it's something it generates something new that's why it's called generative ai now how does this generative ai works i want you to remember four point regarding that okay first it is trained on massive or very huge or large data sets okay that is it's using llm uh, of course so it's using the large data set it is a transformer based architecture it is prompt based generation so based on your input it will generate new content and you can optimize or it is it can be optimized for specific tasks for example for devops automation cyber security for video generation whatever the use case you can customize it further okay and what are the key models in this generative ai for example there are different lms available or large language models for example gpt llama falcon and for image generator there is dali mid joining stable diffusion for audio and music generation there is open ai jukebox or google's uh, music lm for video generation there is runaway uh, ml and sora okay so this is the generative ai now while talking about generative ai i want you to know about a certain thing that's called the rag or retrieval augmented generation now uh, what is this rag before going to is all this you know uh, kind of uh going to definition all that you can think of simply it's a uh, it's used to uh fill that knowledge gap because a ai model can generate one month back two month back or one year back now from that time of generated model to current date it might be one month difference two month different or 10 months difference you don't know now we have to fill that knowledge gap okay uh and how we can do that we can do that using this rag now let's understand this uh particular uh, you know definition and how it works then it, it will become much more clear so retrieval augmented generation rag is an ai technique that enhances 
the responses of large language models or LLMs by retrieving relevant external data before generating the answer. It helps overcome the knowledge cutoffs, hallucinations, and limited context windows. Now, just just uh, you know, refer to this particular uh, diagram. We can see the user is asking a prompt, then the query is not sent to model directly, it's sent to a uh, search retrieval information. It will it might have some articles, some blogs, some DB, for, anywhere. It will fetch the latest data related to the keyword that user um, you know, asked or prompted, and then it will supply that to the LLM. LLM have the past data, it will get the new data based on the search query, and then it will generate the new response. Okay, that is the architecture of RAG. Okay, now how does how does that RAG works? First, of course, as I say, the user query, the model retrieve a question or prompt, then uh, retrieval step, it searches the external data sources from databases, API to deliver information. Then um, our augmentation step, that retrieve data is fed back into the LLM. Uh, to improve his understanding, then generation step, the model generates the accurate and context aware data, which is more, more optimized. Um, and this approach uh, combines the retrieval with search engine DBI and uh, leading to more accurate and up to date and explainable result, which is better, right? You get the updated result instead of old, um, not so updated uh, result, right? So, this is uh, why RAG is uh, one of the very useful features uh, generative AI uses, okay? Now, uh, while talking about um, you know generative AI different models, how the RAG works, there are major players on this generative AI phase. Okay, and Amazon Bedrock is one of the most famous one. Okay, let's go with the definition a bit and how it works, and then and we'll just talk. So, what is Amazon Bedrock? Amazon Bedrock is a fully managed service by AWS that allow user to build, scale generative AI application using foundational models and we already know by now what is foundation model is okay from various ai model providers and it enables developer to integrate this model into application without managing the underlying infrastructure it gives you whatever required to run this models and do the prediction okay so why to use the amazon uh, bedrock access to multiple foundation models it's like Amazon uh, Bedrock support model from Amazon, Anthropic, Kuhe, Meta, Stability AI, Mistral AI, and others. For example, this uh, Deep6 uh, R1 also, you can import as a custom model, okay? And um, a custom, uh, customization with uh, fine tuning and rack. It supports the fine tuning, and you can use the rack for you know updating, doing the, no the knowledge cutoff issue, you can fix with the rack as well. And it need to be supported, okay? And also, one of the very most important thing I'll say, that it support the tied integration with other AWS services. For example, you can quickly or easily fetch the data from the AWS S3, or, which is for the data storage. You can use Lambda for you know execution. Um, you can use the SageMaker for AI ML workflows. You can use the Amazon Kindle for AI powered search. You can use Amazon DynamoDB or RDS for structural data storage. You can do all the stuff uh, if you you know use the Amazon Bedrock because it has a very really tight integration among the other AWS services. Oh, we covered a lot of lot of things, right? Now uh, after this, uh, what you're going to learn? We are like the next video is going to be about the data extraction and preparation because we learn about the what is AI, we learn about what is ML, we learn about what is ML model. How, I mean, what are the different ways you can train the ML model? What is the foundational model? What is uh, LLM or large language models? What is um, generative AI? What is RAG? And even we covered the what is um, Amazon Bedrock. So now it's start, actually you are starting the data collection part, which is the data extraction and preparation before we do the model training because the next video is going to be on the data extraction and preparation. After that, we're going to do the ML training because if you see the pipeline, First is the data extraction, data validation, data preparation, then ML model uh, uh, training, then model execution and model validation. Okay, we'll go with the flow. Then next day, we are going to cover the data extraction, validation and data preparation. Hope you like the today's basic intersection, which is to introduce you to different AI concept because those are absolutely required in order to excel in the MLOP series. Okay, hope you like it. If you like it, please do like the video and share it with others and wait for the next video. Bye-bye. See you soon in the next video.